ADHD is defined as a pattern of inattention and hyperactivity or impulsivity that interferes with the daily activities. So there's different things that we might see in these patients. So regarding the inattention, they can be uh, forgetful, uh, they have a lot of difficulty uh, performing their task, or they might avoid uh, tasks that need a lot of concentration, okay? They can also misplace objects very easily. Uh, regarding the impulsivity or the hyperactivity, these patients are gonna have a lot of difficulty sitting still. Uh, they can have a lot of excessive talking or interrupt others when they're talking. Also, um, these kids can have a lot of difficulty waiting for their turn. So in school, they can be described as disruptive. So there's three characteristics for ADHD. It's inattention, uh, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. So when we're gonna diagnose someone or when we are assessing someone for ADHD, we're thinking about it because of the history that's presented to us, right? They can have the inattention, the impulsivity, all those behaviors. But it's very important to rule out any other psychiatric conditions that can be either contributing to this or causing the symptoms that we think are related to the ADHD. Now, uh, because they're going to be struggling in multiple settings, like at school, at home, we usually try to involve the parents and the teachers to give us more information, to guide us more towards that diagnosis. In order for a patient to meet criteria for ADHD, they need to present six out of nine symptoms of impulsivity or hyperactivity, or six out of nine symptoms of inattention. So in school, like I said, these patients are gonna be described as disruptive for the classroom. Why? Because they cannot sit still. Maybe their grades are not doing very well. Uh, they're gonna be interrupting others, talking a lot. Then at home, the parents might say, you know what, this, uh, my kid is not listening to me when I give him instructions. He's unable to complete his homework. Uh, when I give him something to do, he's unable to do it. Why? Because he cannot focus on it. In the past, it used to be like that. Oh, he just has a lot of energy. He just needs to go exercise or run a lot. But now things are changing. We're understanding, understanding a little bit more about these behaviors. And it is very important to recognize ADHD so that we can start the treatment appropriately and help the kids in, in school, right? Because the main outcome or the goal for us is to help them get good grades in school. We have multiple tools available for us to make an assessment or to guide us for a diagnosis of ADHD. For example, we have the Connor scale, the Vanderbilt scale. Uh, both of them are very good and very accurate, but they're different. The Connor scale is usually used in research setting and it has a cost associated with it. But the Vanderbilt is free. It has a version that is, the, uh, that is they have a version that is available for the parents and for the teachers. And like I said before, if we have um, more information from other sources, it can really guide us towards that diagnosis. Both of them are easy to grade and very useful for us as clinicians to help us make that diagnosis of ADHD. The first line treatment for ADHD are gonna be the stimulants. Now, if let's say a parent doesn't feel comfortable, a patient doesn't feel comfortable, or they're not a candidate for stimulants, we have other types of medications that are non-stimulant that can still help us um, control some of the symptoms that they exhibit. Okay, Regardless of which medication we choose, if it's a stimulant or a non-stimulant, we still have to monitor for side effects. Some of the side effects can include weight changes, blood pressure changes, or heart rate changes. So it is very important for us to follow up on our patients because we want to assess if the medication is working, how their behaviors are changing, and um, we, we really want to know if symptoms are present still because the, the, the treatment, from our perspective, the treatment should be continued uh, if there are symptoms present. As long as symptoms are present, we have to continue with the treatment. Now, we can also work with the school because they can provide special accommodations such as preferential seating, testing accommodations, or daily reports for parents that can also help us make that assessment uh, or, or to guide us if the medication is working or not. Well, the earliest that we can recognize and that we can start the treatment, the better. Because we have to help these kids uh, get good grades in school and continue their lives as normal as possible.
right? So the earliest that we can recognize that a kid has ADHD, then the better the outcome. The symptoms can be controlled. Some of the symptoms as they continue growing, some of the symptoms can resolve or at least be under control. But like I said before, the earliest recognition and the earliest that we start with the treatment, the better.